We brought back Joel Rubin, former Deputy Assistant Secretary of State, to further discuss everything taking place overseas. And earlier today, a U.S. State Department official suggested Ukraine is behind a recent strike of drone attacks. As of this recording, do we know who is responsible for the attack on the two Russian bases? Marcel, we frankly don't have full confirmation from Ukraine, but a lot of hints that they were behind it, as well as you're describing from the State Department and the Russians. But uh, right now, nobody has come out and publicly said, yes, it was Ukraine. But that's to each side's advantage. Frankly, for Russia, if they say that Ukraine can strike inside Russia, that will raise major alarm bells about their air defenses. How come they couldn't stop Ukraine from flying drones into Russian territory? And for Ukraine, uh, if they say it was them, it potentially invites some criticism. It creates a dynamic where Russia may end up preparing. So uh, a little cat and mouse game here, but likely, yes, it was Ukraine. Yeah, and to further discuss about the impact of all of this unfolding, the U.S. Yeah. has come out to say it's not advising Ukraine on these kind of attacks. So how could something like this shake up this war that we've been seeing unfold for months now? Yeah, you know, my engagements with the administration, they do want to play it in that direction. And that's because they uh, consistently are saying, and, and this is the right position, that Ukraine is defending its territory. And if you think about it, where these strikes occurred, and if Ukraine did do them, the, these were targeted at bases from where uh, the strikes against civilian areas in Kyiv have been uh, have been emanating. They are source areas. So this is an opportunity to really stop. Uh, those strikes potentially. And Ukraine has been asking for months, practically for the entire period of the war, to have air defenses to prevent strikes into their civilian areas. And now it looks like they're taking matters into their own hands directly into Russia. Should we be worried on how Russia will respond? Yeah, yeah, we, we should be. But then again, uh, we are, are worried right now. I mean, what Russia is doing is attacking civilian populations in in Kyiv and urban areas, knocking out power, knocked out half of Kyiv's power just the other day again. So Russia is throwing everything it has at Ukraine, but it's on its heels on the battlefield. Uh, but certainly uh, we want this war to end, but we want it to end in a way where Ukraine's sovereignty is respected, where Russia pulls back and stops. Uh, until that point, Ukraine is defending its territory and uh, it's taking these strikes into Russia likely in order to protect its, its, uh, its airspace and to protect its civilians. Yeah, and like you just said, it's like we all want this war to end, but is there any fear yeah. factor left to cause either side to back down? We talked about potential talks last week, but where is that at now? Right. Yeah, you know, we're, we're uh, entering this, this moment in terms of fighting seasons in Europe that is uh, uh, very, very slow. Uh, we're entering into the winter. This is the period where land wars in Europe usually grind to a halt. So we may see a, a weaker fighting on the ground. And uh, President Biden did, as you're, you're, you're pointing out, he did talk about the idea of willingness to speak to Vladimir Putin, the French willing to speak to Vladimir Putin. But as of yet, Vladimir Putin hasn't picked up the phone and, and said, yes, I want to engage in concrete, direct talks. Uh, there, there are a lot of feelers out there, but Putin still doesn't seem to think that he needs to concede much, uh, even though on the battlefield he is really uh, having his army decimated right now in Ukraine. But this could slog on for some time because of the winter months. Yeah, we're going to have to wait and see. Joel Rubin, thank you so much for this breakdown here on our show. We appreciate your time. Thanks, Marcel.